What's going on everybody? This is David and today I'm going to teach you how to transform your PC into a console gaming experience. So the reason I did this in the first place was because I sold my PlayStation 5 in order to build out my gaming PC that has an RTX 4080 in it. But the one thing I missed about my PlayStation 5 is that it really had a seamless experience getting into a game. You know, you just press the start button, all the games were updated in rest mode and you can just jump in a game super quick without even thinking about it. HDR turns on automatically whereas Windows you need to turn that on before you start a game and you know with Windows there's all this whole thing you gotta log in there's all these different launchers and all that all of them have different updates and whatnot. It's very annoying guys. So what I did was I researched how to make my PC into the most console experience that I can get. So that's what this video is all about. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on auto login. And what this is gonna do is every time you turn your PC on or put it out of sleep mode, it is going to automatically go into your Windows. Because the most annoying thing for me is when I turn on my PC and then I have to go on the keyboard and type in my password or type in my pin, right? And then you're not touching your gamepad at all, you're just on your mouse and keyboard. So what I want is I want the most seamless experience experience I can just grab my controller start a game and go right into that game without having to do all that on my mouse and keyboard so the first step to doing that is we're gonna go into search and we're just going to type in N E T P L W I Z all right so you're gonna go ahead and click on that and you're gonna see your users right Maybe you have more users, whatnot, but I only have one user, and that's this right here. That's me. So what you're going to want to do is right up here, it says users must enter a username and password to use this computer. All you're going to want to do is uncheck this. So it's already unchecked for me because I already have this option selected. So for you, you're just going to want to uncheck it, and then you're going to want to hit apply. Okay, and you're probably going to want to restart your computer as well, or it might auto restart. And then just put your password or pin in, and you're good to go. Every time you start your PC or put out a sleep mode, it's going to go right into desktop without you needing to go to your keyboard and typing it in. But let's say that you don't see that option to turn off your password in that little window. So in that case, you're going to want to go to command prompt right here and just paste this right here. I'll leave this in the description below as well and then hit enter and it's probably going to restart your computer as well. So after that you can go back to the first step and type that in and then you're going to see that option for you to turn off the password when you log in. Now the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that all of your launchers, EA, Battle.net, Steam, whatever, all those launchers, whatever launchers you use, you're going to want to make sure that first of all they start up on startup. So every time your computer starts up or gets out of sleep or whatever, it is automatically starting up, all right? Also, number two, you're gonna make sure that if the launcher has that setting, you're gonna want to auto-update your game so that if you do start a game, it doesn't automatically go into an update and then you have to wait 20 minutes for it to update. It is just gonna update in the background already as you're browsing or as you're doing PC stuff. So, for example, we have the EA launcher here, which is the worst launcher in the world, but Either way, we have it. So just go into settings, go into application, for example, and then we have here the setting application update. So it's gonna automatically download and install updates when they're available. And then it's gonna open the EA app automatically on startup. So with this EA app, it is a little weird where it's gonna ask you for your login information every time you do start up your computer, but only if you shut down your computer. If you put your computer into sleep mode, it's not going to ask that option whenever you wake it from sleep. So that's why I am gonna recommend to always put your computer into sleep mode instead of into shutdown, into a full shutdown, because it's gonna keep all your apps and everything in memory. And then here's the battle.net launcher here and as you can see we have the option to start this up so you can launch battle.net when i start my computer and then we can have it minimized to the system tray so that it doesn't just pop up 
you know, when the computer starts, it just gets minimized. And then we're going to remember to log in the emails and all that stuff. So it's just going to log us in automatically and it's going to minimize battle.net to system tray. All right. So there we go. The third step is obviously to get yourself a controller and the one I recommend the most is actually the Xbox wireless controller with the adapter. Now that's going to give you the best compatibility with your Windows PC. It's going to work with every single game and you're going to be able to set up things like waking your PC from sleep with it. But I don't like using the Xbox wireless controller. I prefer the DualSense controller. So that's what I got here. I actually got one of these open box DualSense PS5 controllers and it arrived in perfect condition and I got it for like 35 bucks, super good deal. But that's what I prefer to use personally and how I set it up with my PC and for best compatibility is I downloaded a program called DS4 Windows. So if you go into your browser and you just type in DS4 Windows, this is a tool that's going to trick Windows to thinking that your DualSense controller is actually an Xbox wireless controller. Now for some games, you can natively use your DualSense controller and it's gonna show all the PlayStation icons and all that, but other games, especially those on Game Pass, for example, are not going to work with your DualSense you literally would just not get any, any support at all. Like for Starfield, for example, I learned this the hard way. I was just not able to control my character whatsoever until I downloaded DS4 Windows. Very easy program to download. It'll instruct you how to do everything from the app itself. So just download it and you're good to go to use your DualSense controller. But like I said, if you don't care which controller you use, I would recommend the Xbox wireless controller with Windows 11 or t Windows 10 adapter. That's an adapter that plugs right into your computer. It has a 2.4 gigahertz signal, the same one that your mouse uses. So you get ultra low latency and you get really good compatibility because your controller just directly connect to that dongle instead of uh, messing with your Bluetooth. Whereas with a DualSense controller, I do have to use my Bluetooth. Uh, I'm very thankful that my motherboard's Bluetooth is 5.2 and it's a very, very strong Bluetooth and I get zero lag and latency. But if I did want to use a wired connection like I do for Call of Duty, then I just have a USB-C cable connected to my computer. It's a very long USB-C cable and I just plug that right into my DualSense and I'm able to play that way. All right, now the last and most important step to making your PC feel like a console is to download a game launcher. Now, the most popular one is Steam's Big Picture Mode, but I actually prefer one that is called Play Night. And the reason I prefer this one is because it actually allows you to have an option to auto HDR your games before you start the game. So whenever you click on a game and you want to launch that game, you can actually have the option to have your windows switch to HDR mode before that game launches. With Steam Big Picture mode or other game launchers, you still need to manually uh, enable HDR in windows before starting the game. So as you can see, that totally disconnects you from the console experience. You have to go to your keyboard, it, you know, turn on HDR and all that is super annoying. I just wanted to start the HDR automatically. So with this program, I'm able to do that. And let me show you exactly what this program is like. So let me go ahead and start this program. And this is what it looks like right here. Now, this is not the full screen mode. This is just the desktop mode, but they actually have a full full screen mode that you can use with your gamepad. So I'll show you that a little bit later. But first, let me go through just some of these settings here. So obviously you can use this game launcher just with your mouse and keyboard if you prefer to play with your mouse and keyboard but you can go into s things like you can have your game scan automatically so you can literally just like detect installed it's going to detect all your games you can add them from here or you can have them um i believe uh update all so you can update your uh, game library automatically so here it's going to go through all your game launchers and it's going to import all the games that you have currently installed. 
And every time you start this program, it's going to also automatically add those games as well. Not only that, but we have a bunch of settings here that you can customize. Now, these are pretty much all uh, settings that you're going to want to turn on here. So first of all, you're going to want to turn on launch in full screen mode if you're using a gamepad, obviously. If you're not using gamepad, do not click this because it's only going to that the full screen mode is only for gamepads. So then you're going to obviously also want to launch PlayNet when you start your computer. And then I will not really worry about the PlayNet minimize or anything like that because you're going to start the program anyway. So you don't really want it minimized. And then obviously you're going to just everything else is just fine. Just leave it as it is. The most important thing is to have it launch in full screen mode and have the play night start when your computer starts. Also, uh, download metadata, that's important too. So whenever your, uh, whenever your computer automatically, you know, whenever it turns on, it's gonna automatically download metadata for all the imported games. So that's important as well. All right, now let's get out of here and let's go into full screen mode. So full screen mode, we're gonna press F11 and I'm going to turn on my PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. And here we are able to use the launcher just with me using this controller. And it, it was automatic. I just turned it on and it um, automatically connected to the Bluetooth and now it's working. So as we can see, I can go through everything. And also we can go to an individual game. I can select uh, this button right here, the menu button, and then I can edit uh, different things like, for example, enabling HDR support. So here I can disable it or I can enable it. So whenever I start this game, it's going to automatically start the game with HDR enabled, which is fantastic. Also, we have other options. For example, if we want to, um, you know, let's say you, you stop playing your game, you close out, you're, you're done for the day. So you can go up here and you can exit play night, you can switch desktop mode, or what I do is put it in suspend system mode. So what this does is it basically just, it's the same as a sleep function and it just sleeps your computer. So you just spend the system, put it to sleep, and then when you're ready to go, you just hit a button on your keyboard, the computer starts right back up and you're ready to uh, use your controller to start a game again. It launches straight into this launcher in full screen mode. So that is the best part. So I'll show you guys on a video what that looks like, but this is pretty much how it is to transform your PC to a console experience. All right, now I'm just gonna show you what that looks like in action. So here's my PC in sleep mode. All I'm gonna do is go to my keyboard and press a key. It's gonna wake it up from sleep. Now, if you do have a wired controller or if you have, I had my DualSense controller uh, plugged in, then I could wake it from sleep with the gamepad as well. But I don't have it plugged in. I just have it in Bluetooth mode. And as we can see right there, it straight up boots right into Play Night. And what we can do is I can just grab my DualSense controller right here and I can just start it up. It's gonna automatically connect into Bluetooth. And boom, I'm able to start using the launcher right away. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and, you know, start Grid Legends here. All I got to do is go here and, you know, I'm just going to make sure that HDR is enabled. So it's going to automatically start the game and enable HDR for me, which is so nice. So now I am able to play the game with HDR enabled without me having to go to my keyboard and enable it uh, through the settings all the time manually. And obviously, you know, I always forget that. So this is a, a beautiful feature and I really wish other launchers like Steam Picture, Picture Mode had this option as well. So now we're just gonna go in to the game And if I want to exit this game, all I got to do is just find a quit to desktop if the game has that option. Or in this case, I can just hit the 
hit the back button and hit yes. And what it's gonna do is it's going to go straight back into the launcher. Now, obviously it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna get little pop-ups and all that. So that's why I actually like having this DualSense controller because it has this little touchpad in the middle. And what I can do with that is I can actually use it as a mouse. So with a DS4 Windows, it actually allows you to use this middle touchpad as a little mouse controller. So what I can do is I can actually click on different things with that. So if I do get those annoying pop-ups, I don't have to go to my mouse on keyboard. I can actually just use this gamepad. And that's why I prefer also using the DualSense controller over the Xbox controller or any other controller. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go into suspend system. Yes, I do. And once I do that, the controller automatically turns off. I can put it back in the charger and my computer goes straight back into sleep. So as we can see, it is almost as good as having a, a console, except you have a high-end gaming PC. So thank you guys for watching. Also, one little tip I wanted to leave you guys with is to also cap your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate or a little bit below that if you have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor and also to turn on V-Sync as well. So what this, what this is going to allow you to do is to get a really smooth gaming experience like a console without any screen tearing. So that's pretty much what I recommend. Unless you're playing competitive games, then you can go into the individual uh, settings of that game and uh, unlock the frame rate. But for all games i recommend going into your control panel so for example i have nvidia i can go into nvidia control panel and if i want a certain game to be capped so for example if i uh you know i'm going to go to counter strike 2 uh i can have this game max frame rate capped at like 120 right because that, that's my refresh rate or 117 to uh, avoid it using vsync so in that case, or I can just turn it off or whatever, whatever game, right? So that's what I recommend, especially if you play a lot of single player games, it's gonna give you the smoothest gaming experience. That's all I got, thank you guys for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and have a great day.